Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author Hedrick Smith has taken a close look at how and why America changed in his best-selling book, Who Stole the American Dream? I talked with him and asked him if he could pinpoint when exactly this massive shift in money and power started. It, it changed in the, in the late 70s, both in American politics, there was a power shift, and in the thinking of America's business leadership in terms of what uh, the share of the wealth and the growth and the prosperity and the productivity of the American economy would go to the middle class and what would go to the corporate elite. And you can see enormous differences between then and now. Uh, the CEO used to make in, in a major American corporation about 40 times what the average American worker made. Okay, Today it's nearly 400 times, it's 360 times. If you look at the average wages of a typical American worker, middle class person today, um, it is almost identical adjusted for inflation to what it was in 1978 and the CEO pay is 350 percent higher and the people uh, the pay of the people at the top one percent is 600 percent higher so you have a wedge in the American economy if you're in the middle you're, you're just staying even you're not getting anywhere three decades of not getting anywhere now this didn't happen in isolation you know, corporations just didn't suddenly decide oh we're gonna keep more of the wealth for ourselves right now I mean they were aided and abetted by politics by politicians yeah well Politics and economics go together, absolutely. When you see high degrees of economic inequality, not just in America, but in China or any other country, you're going to start to see very uneven politics, very unequal politics. And when you had the great American prosperity, you also had American political power exercised by the middle class. Back in the old days, there were more labor lobbyists than business lobbyists. Today, Washington has 12,000 business lobbyists and 400 for labor. You know, the other thing that appears to be disappearing in the United States is upward mobility. You know, you know we've always been told, you know, you go to America, you work hard and you'll succeed. Well, you, 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 can't, you can't say it's disappeared. You mm -hmm. still, I mean, you still got stories of kids coming out of, uh, you know, the ghetto and becoming NBA, national basketball uh, f stars, football stars, or, or just doing well in business. But it is not the same as it was before. The latter is not there as easily as it was before. And sadly, uh, there are other places in the world, particularly in Western Europe, Germany, France, Scandinavia, where it is easier to move from the bottom to the middle and it's easier to move from the middle to the top. The top in America now is so far away and the people in the top have so many advantages, getting their kids into Harvard or, or Caltech or a great in educational institution, right. knowing other people in the elite so they can get jobs. Um, simply all those benefits are widening the gap. Education used to be the great leveler in American society. It is now adds to the stratification. Okay, let's get to that final question. How do we bring it back? How does it well, all come there, back? There, it's not hard to see things that could be done. I mean, it, it, you, could, you could bring more jobs home in America by changing the corporate tax system so that it's not advantageous to American businesses to move their, their factories to China or India or uh, Asia or elsewhere. Um, you could rebuild America's infrastructure. That would not only make us more competitive as a nation, but it would generate a lot of jobs. You could straighten out the personal tax system, which is the big argument that's going on in Washington these days. But more importantly, it seems to me, Americans in the middle class have got to get politically engaged again. They can start to say, hey, if you're going to bail out the banks, bail out the homeowners. They can start to say, uh, you know, we need a better environmental situation. They can say, let's rebuild the infrastructure. You know, I, I mean, we have to get active again as a people. Okay. Hedrick Smith, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Anand.